Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming examination. I am Gulapsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs, and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247. और आज का सेशन थोड़ा स्पेशल होने वाला है बिकॉज़ इन टुडेस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ स्पीच गिवन बाय आवर आरबीआई गवर्नर श्री शक्तिकांत दास ऑन द टॉपिक दैट इज मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक चैलेंजेस द करंट मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक चैलेंजेस एंड द की पॉलिसी प्रायोरिटीज टू बी टेकन अप सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले सो दिस इज आवर गवर्नर आरबीआई गवर्नर and recently he attended a meeting whereby he addressed at a high level conference meeting co-organized by IMF APD that is the Asia and Pacific Development as well as IMF SARTTAC which is South Asia Regional Training and Technical Assistant Centers theek hai assistance center so these two bodies came together and they co-organized a high level committee whereby the topic of discussion was pathways or the ways the roads which could be followed in order to have a resilient sustainable as well as inclusive growth specifically for the south asian region so south asia if we talk about south asia sabse pehle hame ye samajhna padega what all constitutes south asia so let's see here in this graph or in this diagram whereby you can see that there are eight countries that constitutes the south asian region ab south east asia region alag hai south west asia region alag hai we're just talking about the south asian region which includes of we have afghanistan pakistan india sri lanka maldives bhutan bangladesh and nepal so we have eight countries which are included in the south asian region ab ye jo bhi report hai ya jo bhi speech hai that the rbi governor has given what is the utility for us as a student of finance kitna hamare liye important hai wo samajhna bhi zaruri hai so we talk about specifically this this is very important aapke exam perspective se because questions can be asked in your descriptive writing as well if they ask you what are the current macro economic challenges that india is facing since india is also a part of this south asian region aap yahan se kuch acche pointers utha kar apne answers mein present kar sakte ho thereby getting that extra mark or the extra plus 2 or plus 1 mark aur wahi cheez aapko differentiate karega bakiyon se the second thing where this could be used is in your interview interview ke time pe you could quote certain things from this speech and by and like this is going to help you really so let's get started aur fir samajhte hain ki is speech mein rbi governor ne kis kis cheez ke bare mein baat ki hai if i if i have to give you a broad outline sabse pehle unhone background ki baat kari hai where by the governor the rbi governor has talked about the brief history the or the rich history of the south asian region so how we have performed across years since time age as well as what are the problems the macro economic challenges that we as a country or as a nation are facing together and what are the key priorities that should be kept in mind and that should be taken into consideration while formulating any kind of policies for each countries and at last the governor the rbi governor has talked about cooperation among these eight countries jab tak hum intra regional cooperation apne andar nahi layenge if there is no cooperation amongst us fir hum we cannot stand out as a specific region at the world level so let's deep dive into this and let's talk about the rich history of south asian region sabse pehle the rbi governor talked about how the south asian region was a key hub of ideas commerce culture for instance he talked about the indus valley civilization which is one of the most extensive as well as one of the three earliest civilizations to have existed on earth to ye kafi extensive tha we all know about this second he also talked about how trade and commerce flourished in the south asian region specifically the trade of variety of spices as well as food items as well as handicrafts ye sari cheeze south asian region se trade hote the theek hai and therefore if we talk about in the global era then the south asian region has acts has actually outsized the influence on the progress 
एज वेल एज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन एंड ट्रेड सिविलाइजेशन के केस में वी हैव इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन एज वेल एज इन टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड हमने बहुत सारे स्पाइसिस बहुत सारे ऐसे ज्वेलरी मेटल्स एज वेल एज प्रोडक्ट्स क्लोथ्स एज वेल एज हैंडी क्राफ्ट प्रोडक्ट्स सारे हमने आउटसोर्स करे हैं ट्रेड करे हैं एंड दिस मेक्स आर रीजन द साउथ एशियन रीजन टू हैव अ ग्रेटर इन्फ्लुएंस ओवर द ग्लोबल वर्ल्ड ठीक है सो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड नाउ टॉक अबाउट द करंट सिनारियो अब हम यहाँ पे डेमोग्राफिक्स देखेंगे वॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द साउथ एशियन रीजन सबसे पहले फिर टॉक अबाउट द पॉपुलेशन देन दीज एट कंट्रीज टूगेदर कॉन्स्टिट्यूट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन नंबर्स के बेसिस पे देखो या आप ऐसा देख सकते हो तो दिस इज वन फोर्थ ऑफ द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड अगर हम एज की बात करें द टर्म कॉल्ड डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट दैट देन द मीडियम एज फॉर दिस साउथ एशियन रीजन कंट्रीज इज 27 सेवन ईयर्स एंड दिस मेक्स दिस रीजन द यंगेस्ट रीजन इन द वर्ल्ड एक तरीके का वी हैव द डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंट और इफ यू वर्क ऑन आर ह्यूमन्स skills or on the human population that we have then we can actually grow tremendously third and third talks about the growth rate so if we talk about the average growth rate of all these countries taken together then it was around 3% in 1970 which is actually increased to increase to around 7% before the pandemic next comes the per capita income which is also increased which is also increased and we have also seen lots of progress in key development parameters let's say if we talk about literacy if we talk about education if we talk about health unme bhi kafi improvement dekhne ko mili hai across the years if we talk about the imf estimates again this becomes important ki imf kya bolta hai so according to the imf it says that the south asian countries contributes around 15% of the global growth so suppose let's say jo bhi global global level pe taking all the countries together uski growth hai uska 15% growth comes from the south asian countries specifically from india and bangladesh and so these two countries are leading in terms of growth that these south asian countries have in totality next comes remittances as we all know india is one of the largest recipient of remittances therefore it naturally brings that one fifth that is around 20% of the total of the world's total remittances comes to the south asian region iske peeche bhi history hai ki hamare paas itni remittances kyu aa rahi hain it is because of the labor force the population that we have that has actually emigrated and they are sending money from those countries and this has actually increased the total remittances that the south asian region gets every year which is 1/5 आई होप आपको करंट सिनारियो समझ आ गया होगा यू हैव अ ब्रॉड अंडरस्टैंडिंग कि साउथ एशियन रीजन एक्चुअली है क्या अब हम बात करेंगे चैलेंजेस की वॉट आर द चैलेंजेस द ग्लोबल चैलेंजेस दैट एज अ नेशन कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ ऑल द साउथ एशियन कंट्रीज वी हैव फेस टिल डेट वॉट आर द करंट चैलेंजेस एंड वॉट आर सर्टन की फैक्ट्स एंड रिपोर्ट डेटा सबसे पहले हम बात करेंगे ग्लोबल चैलेंजेस दैट द साउथ एशियन रीजन हैज फेस्ड फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट कम्स दी फूड क्राइसिस ऑफ दिन सिक्सटीज और इसको हमने कैसे डील किया सो वी सक्सेसफुली इम्प्लीमेंटेड द ग्रीन रेवोल्यूशन एंड थ्रू दिस वी वेर एबल टू डील विद दी फूड क्राइसिस ऑफ दिनटीन सिक्सटीज सो नो डाउट वी हैड लॉट्स ऑफ चैलेंजेस बट थ्रू टाइम वी ऑल्सो केम अप विद सर्टन रेजिलियंट मेथड इन ऑर्डर टू सरपास और टू बी रेजिलियंट enough during such external shocks second talks about the oil shocks of the 1970s jab 1970s mein kafi zyada oil shocks ho rahe the because of the because in the because of the tremendous increase in the prices of these oil many people from the south asian region actually emigrated to the west asia and that's the reason why we're having lots of remittances on an increase significant increase in the remittances flow theek hai and this is because we are one of the largest labor market driven labor economy we have lots of labor the demographic dividend that we have third was the most important thing that happened in the history of the world that is the asian financial crisis of 1997 what was the impact kafi high level pe or at a high magnitude there was capital outflow from these south uh from south countries the south asian countries and therefore it resulted in huge capital outflow as well as extreme pressure on the foreign exchange 
मार्केट्स तो जो भी हमारा फॉरेन एक्सचेंज मार्केट था हमारा जो रिजर्व रिक्वायरमेंट थे एवरी थिंग वेंट हे वायर द एक्सचेंज रेट्स बिकम वेरी वॉलेटाइल ड्यूरिंग द एशियन फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस सो दीज आर द सम ऑफ द चैलेंजेस द ग्लोबल चैलेंजेस चैलेंजेस दैट द साउथ एशियन कंट्री हैज और हैव फेस्ड now what are the crisis prevention strategy that has been taken up by the south asian country tab yahan pe dekh sakte ho which says that these south asian countries across times and during these global level challenges actually try to prioritize sound macroeconomic policies to unke paas unhone isko priority priority di that they should have macroeconomic policies and also they should have financial sector reform so as to be resilient enough during or at, at the events of any kind of external shocks and their key focus has always been on competition having certain prudential regulations as well as transparency audit and having certain basic accounting standards so that governance could also be maintained so i hope this is clear to you priority has always been on macroeconomic policies as well as having financial sector reforms next comes how has these helped so this is actually helped in preserving the macro stability so after the financial crisis the asian financial crisis of 1997 uske baad se the country has actually been the countries in these region has actually been trying to be more resilient and also if you have seen in the financial crisis the global financial crisis of 2008 जहाँ पे बड़ी बड़ी इकोनॉमीज लेट से द यू एस वॉज शैटर्ड इंडिया एज अ कंट्री देन वॉज इन अ वेरी गुड पोजिशन टू विड होल्ड इट सेल्फ राइट सो दिस टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ वी हैव प्रिजर्व द मैक्रो स्टेबिलिटी वाइल एट द सेम टाइम सस्टेनिंग द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ द डोमेस्टिक इकोनॉमी सिंस और मोस्ट ऑफ दीज कंट्रीज आर एन ओपन इकोनॉमी एंड देर फोर दे हैव मेनटेन दैट इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ बींग एन डोमेस्टिक इकोनॉमी एज वेल एज हैविंग इट्स सेल्फ uh integrated with the global economy so this has been the crisis prevention strategy so hum kaise in future crisis ko hone se rok sakte hain by having a prioritized sound macroeconomic policy as well as maintaining resilience in your financial sector by having lots of reforms now let's move forward and talk about the recent challenges now these challenges has been common for almost all the country in the world and that is of the external shocks the multiple shocks that we have faced specifically of the covid-19 pandemic iske wajah se we had faced a lots of challenges aur jaise ye thoda sa normalize hua we again had the russia ukraine war and all of these has actually posed lots of challenges for the country let's say the geopolitical Uh, the tensions that we had apart from that the impact that these geopolitical tension had on the oil prices the global supply chain disruptions elevated level of price elevated price levels leading to inflation or higher inflation into the country impact of excessive or aggressive monetary policy tightening by the countries by the central banks across the world has actually led to several problems what is the problem if we talk about specifically for the south asian region the main problem that we at this time are facing is the unsustainable debt as well as climate change induced event ab ye kya hote hain how are we facing unsustainable debt this we will talk about in the coming slides so these are the main problem that we as a nation are facing now that is unsustainable debt the debt distress that we are facing and climate changes the climate change related events now let's move forward and let's talk about certain key facts and data first and foremost the first data is by imf World Economic Outlook database of October 2022, whereby it has said that India, Bangladesh, and Maldives would be the fastest growing economies in the world for the financial year 2022-23. So this is a good sign for the South Asian region as a whole because three of the countries in this South Asian countries has actually been said that it will be the fastest growing economies in the world. Next is the data by Asian Development Banks. This is the December 2022 outlook, whereby it has talked about the GDP of the South Asian region, whereby it has projected that their GDP is expected to grow to to 
6.5 percent in the financial year 2022 followed by 6.3 percent in the financial year 2023 और हमने starting के slide में देखा था that the age that the South Asian country is actually growing around 7 percent so this ratio 6.5 the number the figure 6.5 or 6.3 is not bad enough but yes there is always a scope and we should always strive to achieve greater uh, greater growth in terms of GDP in future. Now let's move forward and talk about what World Bank has to say about this. So the World Bank has actually talked about regional cooperation between these countries, the eight countries in the South Asian region, wherever the World Bank has said that if we have regional cooperation, then it is going to be a win-win situation for all. How? Let's see that. Here it says that we should have intra-regional trade. Let's say, and the World Bank actually quotes certain data that one-fifth, that is 20% of the total potential we are actually not utilizing of the, we are actually not utilizing of the 80% of the total potential that we have in the intra-regional trade. So within intra-countries, we can trade and we can actually make good of it. And only one-fifth we are utilizing at present. And because of that, we are actually at loss and the shortfall in terms of total revenue or total income that uh, we as a nation could have gained was annual 44 billion US dollars. So, itne ka loss hum har saal kar rahe hai because we are not tapping the growth potential that we have in terms of intra-regional trade. Second, the World Bank talks about having a common electricity market for Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Nepal. So the World Bank says that if these four countries come together and there is cooperation among these countries and they actually have a common electricity market, in that case we will actually be saving a lot of money in terms of capital cost. And if we could see then the yearly yield or saving would be around 17 billion US dollars and this is huge and such money could be used for other for the development of other sectors. Let's say boosting the infrastructure of the economy or having uh, spend this money on health and education or sanitation in that country. Next. The World Bank talks about investment in transport and logistics, whereby it says that if we have a cooperated, um, if we have a single chain investment in transport and logistics sector, then, then this can actually reduce the cost for shipments in the South Asia. So, a hub can be made, a global hub global chain whereby the shipments could be done using, using that centralized shipment center. So cooperation at the regional level is very important if we want to develop the nation or develop the South Asian region as a whole. And this cooperation could be in terms of trade that we are doing, in terms of having a common electricity market as well as having a common transport and logistic center. So this is what World Bank had to say. Now let's move forward. But before that, if you're liking the way we are teaching, then you can actually go to our website and have a look or have a trial of the live courses that we are we are providing to you. Apart from that, you can also download the app. If you want to get access to daily quizzes, topper strategies, the past year papers and their analysis, and also to get notification of all the classes that are conducted. So let's now move forward and now let's talk about the policy priorities that RBI governor has talked about in this very address that was made at the high level conference. So here the RBI governor has actually talked about six policy priorities. So the RBI governor says that given uh, given the macroeconomic challenges that we are facing currently, the contemporary challenges, these are the six areas where the focus of the central bank or the government of the, of the country, of all the country in the South Asian region should have been so that we can actually become more resilient. What are these six factors, the policy priority that should be taken up? First and foremost is taming inflation. Inflation ko hume ek desire level pe lana hai. Second is containing external debt vulnerabilities. So external debt ko leke jo vulnerability create hui hai, usse hume maintain karna hai, kam karna hai. And third, raising the productivity so that growth could be improved. 
Fourth talks about strengthening cooperation in the energy in the energy sector. Fifth talks about having a cooperation for a greener economy in the South Asian region. And finally, the RBI governor talks about promoting tourism. So, these six such policy, such such areas are where the government across the South Asian region countries should have their focus. on a priority basis so let's get started with the very first one that is taming inflation ab hum jo bhi yahan se policy priorities ke points discuss karenge we'll first talk about the problem at the macro level that we are facing and how we can solve them theek hai sabse pehla aata hai taming inflation ye aap sabko pata hai we have studied a lot of time that because of the price pressure specifically the sustained price pressure that we are facing for almost a year in the south asian economy there has been multiple external shocks what are these shocks shocks related to covid covid related global supply chain disruptions food and energy crisis that we are facing because of the russia ukraine war the financial market volatility because of the aggressive monetary policy tightening तो ये हो गया हमारा बिकॉज ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन और बिकॉज ऑफ द सस्टेन्ड प्रेशर दैट दैट इज देयर ऑन द प्राइसेस हमें ये सारी प्रॉब्लम्स देखने को मिल रही हैं अब यहाँ पे कुछ डेटा है द डेटा इज दैट इफ इट टेक द थ्री क्वार्टर्स द फर्स्ट थ्री क्वार्टर्स दैट इज फ्रॉम अप्रैल टू डिसम्बर अगर हम इन तीन क्वार्टर्स को लें दो के देन द फूड प्राइस इन्फ्लेशन इन द साउथ एशियन रीजन हैज बिन मोर देन ट्वेंटी एंड विच इज एक्चुअली वेरी ह्यूज उसके बाद आता है दैट नॉट ओनली दैट वी आर फेसिंग इन्फ्लेशन बट उसके वजह से वी आर फेसिंग अ वेरी क्रिटिकल प्रॉब्लम दैट इज इंपोर्टेड फ्यूल इन्फ्लेशन सिंस वी आर एन इम्पोर्ट लेड इकोनॉमी लेट्स से इंडिया एंड द अदर कंट्रीज इन द साउथ एशियन रीजन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सिंस प्राइसिस एंड बिकॉज ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन वी आर एक्चुअली इम्पोर्टिंग इन्फ्लेशन विद द इनपुट दैट इज द फ्यूल दैट वी आर actually importing and this has actually made the entire region vulnerable to the imported fuel inflation and because of the inflation that we are seeing in the crude oil prices the increase in the prices of crude or other uh, oil prices we are actually seeing an increase in the prices of the final goods and services which is ultimately leading to more domestic inflation डोमेस्टिक इन्फ्लेशन भी इसीलिए इंक्रीज हो रही है नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सोल्यूशन सो वट कैन बी डन सो इन ऑर्डर टू हैव अ सक्सेसफुल डिस इन्फ्लेशन वॉट इज दिस इन्फ्लेशन टू रिड्यूज द रेट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन नॉट गोइंग नेगेटिव कि नेगेटिव नहीं जाना है बट टू रिड्यूस इट इसके लिए हमें क्या करना पड़ेगा वी नीड टू हैव अ वेरी क्रेडिबल मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी एक्शन and that should also be accompanied by the targeted supply side intervention agar aap newspaper pad rahe ho ke there you must have seen that the inflation the causes of inflation is not only demand led but it is also supply led and therefore inflation or therefore the targeted supply side intervention by the government or through fiscal or trade policy is required so that we can actually contain or control the inflation that we are facing second is the approach that we are taking for this inflation or to reduce inflation should be mindful mindful in the sense that we all know that there is a trade off between growth and inflation agar aap inflation ko control karne ke liye bahut zyada monetary policy uh, mein rates ko hike karoge if you are using aggressive monetary policy action and you are rising the rate of interest tremendously then it is going to affect your growth therefore we should be very much mindful that if we are trying to control inflation then that should be done in a very credible way otherwise this will have adverse impact on the growth of the country and we are also hearing of the news such as having a global slowdown as well as recessionary situation so this is how we can actually tame inflation having credible monetary policy action as well as having a mindful approach now let's move forward and talk about the second very important priority that is controlling or reducing external debt vulnerability sabse pehle samajhte hain ki why are we having such a surge in the external debt so here it says that first and foremost we are actually seeing an increase in the external debt taken by the south asian region and this has actually risen to 35% which is around 62 billion us dollars 
in 2022. So we already had a very high external debt since we are an emerging and a developing nation. We actually require debt or we take money from the developed nations so that we can use those money to improve our productivity and uh, growth in the economy. But after the pandemic, this is actually increased further. Agar hum baat kare World Bank ki, World Bank ne kya bola hai iske baare mein? But before that, we need to understand DSSI. Ke DSSI hote kya hai? So if we talk about DSSI, D DSSI is nothing but Debt Service Suspension Initiative. So this DSSI initiative is of the G20 nations and it was set up in May 2020. And under this, there are 73 identified countries. Ye kya bolta hai? DSSI. It says that for a limited period of time, let's say an emerging country has taken a loan. Or to for a limited period of time, let's say for six months or for a year, wo aapko loan suppose repay karna hai, that you are suspended from doing so if you ask for such uh, suspension. So, agar aap request karoge, to aapko suspend kar diya jayega for making the payment of that loan. Let's say you have taken a loan of 10 lakhs crore, right? And you need to pay interest, let's say per year of 1 lakh crore. In that case, if you have, you do not have that uh, much money, if you, you, if, we, if you face difficult to make that payment, then you can request the country, uh, request the country from where you have taken the money, the creditor country under DSSI and they will be providing you with a suspension period. Aapko cooling period de denge, whereby you did not pay during that period. So it says that for a limited period of time, debt service payment, what is debt service payment? Payment of interest as well as the principal part. So, kuch principal repayment bhi hoti hai aur interest payment hoti hai. So, this debt service payment from poorest countries will be suspended upon the request from the country. So, if the country requests, to usko ye suspend kar diya jayega for a period of time. Uske baad unko fir repayment to karna hi karna hai. Kuch time ke liye defer ho jayegi. What is the benefit? Let's say the country is having immediate liquidity needs. It needs to support its domestic economy. Let's say Sri Lanka. Uske paas paise nahi hai ki wo external debt ko repay kare because it has to look in the domestic economy as well and it requires urgently liquidity funds. In that case, it can actually request the country under DSSI, the creditor country and therefore, thereby get the benefit of deferment of the debt service repayment. So I hope DSSI is clear to you and the poorest countries hoti hai, these are actually 73 which has been identified under this. So according to World Bank, what does World Bank say? So World Bank says that 60% of the 73 DSSI eligible countries are at a high risk of debt distress. Ab inko debt distress kyu ho ra? Why are they finding it so difficult to make the payment? First and foremost, it is because of the global shocks, the multiple shocks that these countries are facing. Apart from that, this is actually increased. The debt distress is increased because of the increase in global interest rate. The aggressive monetary policy hikening that has been done, uh, the interest rate hikening that has been done under the aggressive monetary policy, this has actually increased the global interest rate. And apart from that, the compounding of interest because of the increase in interest rate has actually shot up. And because of that, the debt distress, debt distress of these countries have actually increased on the DSSI debt service defer, deferrals. So, they have paid it first, we will pay it later. When it comes to COVID, after COVID, after Russia and Ukraine has increased, the war has increased, Russia and Ukraine has increased, inflation has increased, the rate of interest has been hiked across the countries. This is why they are actually finding it very difficult and they are in debt distress, 60%. Now let's talk about another thing that is the private creditors participation in DSSI. So when this initiated at that time, private creditors were also encouraged to be a part of this DSSI whereby the countries can borrow from private creditors. And because of that, there has been an increase in the dependency on the private creditors and this has actually increased the debt servicing uh, cost 
जो इंटरेस्ट और प्रिंसिपल रीपेमेंट करना है वो एक्चुअली बढ़ गया है बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्लोबल हाइक इन द इंटरेस्ट रेट एज वेल एज दिस इज एक्चुअली बिकमिंग मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड तो क्रेडिटर्स के साथ जो रेजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस है डेट रेजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस इट हैज एक्चुअली बिकम मोर क्रिटिकल बिकॉज इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द मेचोरिटी ऑन द लोन सो इफ यू हैव टेकन द लोन फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट क्रेडिटर द मेचोरिटी इज अराउंड ट्वेल्व ईयर्स मतलब आपको दो बारह साल के अंदर रीपे करना है जो भी आपने लोन लिया है बट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अ गवर्नमेंट और ऑफिशियल क्रेडिटर इन दैट केस द मेचोरिटी इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स ईयर वे बाई यू गेट अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम टू रीपे योर डेट सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज द इन्फ्लेशन रेट or the rate of interest that is being charged so average rate of interest that is being charged or the private creditors that are charging on the loan is 5% as against just a meager of 2% on the loans if that are taken from official creditors and these two factors have actually made the entire borrowing from the private creditors more complicated and difficult and it has actually increased the debt servicing cost of the borrower country तो ये हो गया एक्सटर्नल डेट और इसकी जो वलरेबिलिटी है इससे हमें बचना है हाउ कैन वी डू सो दैट कैन बी डन बाय द हेल्प ऑफ द मल्टीलेटरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सच एस आई एम एफ एंड द वर्ल्ड बैंक ये कैसे हमें हेल्प कर सकते हैं सो देयर पार्टिसिपेशन और देयर रोल बिकम बिकम्स इम्पॉर्टेंट इन डेट ट्रीटमेंट एंड हाउ कैन दैट बिकम मोर इफेक्टिव they will lay down certain rules and regulations certain uh, ways through which we can reduce uh, we can reduce the debt that we have taken agar hum usko follow karte hain apart from that the country can also become more resilient so that in future it could save its uh, save itself from any kind of such distress theek hai so this will also help in enhancing transparency as well as preserving these debt sustainability in future next is imf can also help in building the capacity in the south asian region whereby such institutions can focus on region specific macro dynamics let's say india hai to india ke jo macro dynamics hai us pe focus karke customize approach a customized solution provide kare let's say for india based on the macro dynamics of india for bangladesh based on the macro dynamics of bangladesh as a solution provide kare and thereby build certain capacity so that there can be policy effectiveness as well as the economic aspirations of the nation could also improve theek hai so this was the second important priority that we should focus on the third comes raising productivity ab hum productivity ko kaise badhaye so here the rbi governor talks about what is the current policy focus so we talk about the current policy focus it is more broad based and it is sustained economic recovery so we are actually talking about economic recovery on a broad based but apart from that what is more required what is required is deep structural reforms hamare paas deep structural reforms hone chahiye so that in future we are resilient enough we could safeguard ourselves from any such multiple or such external shocks theek hai thereby having the potential to have growth trajectories in the south asian region also the governor stated that the ongoing global realignment of supply chains having green transitions and advances in technology that we see at the global level they are actually providing lots of opportunities for investment and growth so we as a south asian region hame kya karna hai we need to tap that opportunity and how can that be done that can be done by creating a very conducive environment or a congenial climate for attracting new private investment so that these companies could come into the south asian region and could set up the uh, industries in these places only iske alawa the rbi governor also talked about the role of the public sector whereby it said that these public sector can actually lead the countries in areas that actually create certain large positive externalities that is infrastructure ko boost kar sakta hai एजुकेशन को बूस्ट कर सकता है हेल्थ को बूस्ट कर सकता है सो द पब्लिक सेक्टर कैन एक्चुअली लीड द कंट्री नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक अबाउट द स्पेसिफिक एरिया ऑफ पॉलिसी प्रायोरिटी टू रेस प्रोडक्टिविटी तो आरबीआई गवर्नर ने क्या करा इन्होंने चार ऐसे पॉइंट्स बताए दैट दीज शुड बी द स्पेसिफिक एरियाज इफ एनी कंट्री 
or the South Asian region, the South Asian countries should think of in case if they want to improve their productivity. What are these four key policy priority? The first and foremost is resource reallocation. So, we have improvement in our resource allocation. Mein. How can that be done? That can be done by actually moving the production from low intensive or from low productivity. So, whatever we are production, we have to bring change lana hai, transition lana hai, and we need to focus on those sectors which gives us higher productivity. As well as we should also promote innovation in those sectors. The second most important thing to improve, prior, to improve productivity is to focus on training and imparting education. So, focus on education and skill upgradation. The main problem that uh, South Asian region face kar rahi hai, that is skill mismatch. Aapki skill kuch aur hai, but aapko kuch aur karna pad raha hai. And that can only be reduced if we have proper education and if we focus on proper education and skill upgradation. Also, since we enjoy a demographic dividend, we need to uh, educate our people so much that while being a labor intensive country, our products are still globally competitive. Third important thing that can be done to improve productivity is to improve investment on research and development. Because of globalization, no doubt technology can transfer here and there, but at, at the same time, we also need to invest on R&D in our specific countries as well. And for that, a conducive environment should be created and activities such as scientific research and startups should be rewarded. Next important thing to be done to improve or to raise productivity is enhancing investment in physical infrastructure. Apart from physical infrastructure, we should also think about digital infrastructure. That is the data centers that we are having. As we can see, let's say in the education field, in the health field, food le lo, kahi bhi le lo, digital infrastructure is playing an immense role. And therefore, the focus should be to provide quality internet connectivity as well as reliable digital payments. Physical infrastructure kya kya hongi? Focusing on energy, transportation and telecommunic telecommunication, which are the prime drivers of productivity growth. So, these four factors are like this. And if we work on these four factors, then we can actually improve productivity in the country. Now, let's move forward and talk about the next important policy priority. That our priority should be That is strengthening cooperation for energy sector. So, what is our energy sector? We need to cooperation in the energy what is the problem that we as a nation are facing? The problem is that we are highly dependent on the global supply of energy. And therefore, any global, uh, global impact or any global thing that happen, koi bhi impact hota hai, we are the one who face the consequences because we need to import such uh, energy from the other countries. And in that case, we face repercussions in terms of imported fuel inflation and therefore we are actually vulnerable since we are highly dependent on fossil fuel and imported energy so what we need to do we need to strengthen the energy cooperation arrangement within the regional countries that is within the south asian region countries so as to enhance and increase or improve our resilience to the external shocks solution ke baat kare so, India ka example RBI governor ne liya tha, whereby he talked about how India and Bangladesh have act, actually have a linking of power grids so that they can improve the connectivity in the energy sector. Secondly, the RBI governor also talked about India-Bangladesh friendship pipeline project, which is a 30, 130 kilometer long project, which will be useful to export petroleum products. Third, the RBI governor talked about integration of the national power system so that the untapped hydroelectricity or the surplus hydropower could be used and so that we could have certain buffer in times of any energy shocks. So this is how we can strengthen cooperation for the energy security as we are highly dependent on importing these products. Let's move forward to the next priority that is cooperation within the countries so as to have a greener economy in the region. Now, dekho, let's see the South Asian region, no doubt, bohat zyada hariyali hai. But apart from that, we also are most vulnerable 
the most vulnerable region to climate change. Why is this so? Because of the huge population that we have as well as the degradation of our natural resources. And recently we are also seeing certain extreme climate events. Heat waves, ho rahe hai, floods, droughts as well as the cold wave that we are recently seeing. This is actually making the uh, area, the South Asian region more vulnerable to climate change. So, iske liye hume kya karna padega? we need funds, we need technology, we also need key minerals and these are very critical for us to transition to a greener economy. Therefore, there is a requirement to have a robust regional disaster management system. So, every country in the South Asian region should have their own disaster management system and then there can be a cooperation between these disaster management systems. And this can actually help to ensure uh, ensure that we have a timely, effective, cost-effective response to the devastating climatic events. Now let's move forward and talk about what India has done in with regards to this greener economy. So if we talk about India has in the year to 2019 has actually launched. Yeah. So India in the year 2019 has actually launched the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, right? Uske alawa, India ne bohut jaga collaborate kiya hai. For example, India's International Solar Alliances, which has partnered with GE App, that is Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet, which aims at solarizing the world. So aap agar aise greener initiatives loge, then for sure you will uh, move or transition to a more greener economy. Uske alawa, the South Asian region therefore should have a regional disaster management system in order to tackle any climate change. Apart from that, they should also strengthen cooperation amongst themselves so as to have a green transition of the region at a reasonable as well as at a faster mode. So, ye ho gaya hamara greener economy ka jiske upar RBI governor ne baat kari hai. Now, the last thing that we need to talk about, the priority that we should talk about is promote promoting tourism, not only asking people across the globe to come, but also at the regional level. The countries in the South Asian region can actually have more of tourist uh, attractive centers so as to boost the tourism sector. So, here we have said that the major contributor for some countries in the South Asian region, let's say the Maldives, Nepal, Bhutan and Sri Lanka, Tourism is actually the one which contributes majority to their GDP and this as a sector has created huge employment in that country and therefore and the, the governor also talks about how the South Asian region has rich untapped potential in tourism. If we want, we can tourism to the next level. Tak bhi leker ja sakte hai. No doubt in the recent times after the COVID pandemic, it has revived but yet it has not reached to the pre-COVID levels and therefore initiatives should be taken at the regional as well as at a cooperated way so that this could be revived, the tourism sector could actually be promoted. And intra-regional tourist flows, which below potential, is a uh, move, mil jai, right? It could be promoted. How can this be done? So certain regional initiatives can be taken, let's say re religious tourism circuits ho sakte hai, whereby countries that have the common historical and cultural footprint can actually have regional tourism circuits. Then at the same time, we can also have adventure tourism circuits. Also, we can have medical, spiritual or Ayurvedic tourism circuits. And all of these will actually help in boosting the tourism industry in the South Asian region and also creating a vibrant regional value chain. So the macroeconomic challenges that we are facing as well as the policy, the key policy areas where our priority should be there has been described in detail by the RBI governor in his very speech. And finally, the RBI governor talked about greater intra-regional uh, trade as well as cooperation. So he said that we are better than going outside. We eight countries. Hai, we should first promote intra-trade between us. Also, this will help in boosting our economy and also we can have more opportunities in terms of growth and employment for the entire nation. Iske alawa, 
the RBI governor, since he is the governor of, of our central bank, has, has given certain anecdotes whereby he has talked about how with the central bank level, countries can learn from each other in areas or in meeting certain goals and challenges. What are these? Infrastructure financing kaise karni hai? Ya fir digital financial inclusion ko aur kaise improve karna hai? Aur kaise promote karna hai? Reducing the cost of cross-border remittances. Let's say if uh, remittances is being transferred from countries of South Asian region within them, usko hum kaise reduce kar sakte hai? That can be done, let's say, by making use of UPI system. And India has actually been doing so. NP NPCI recently has allowed many countries to use UPI system and we can also have certain unconventional monetary policy and such things can only happen if countries come together and they cooperate within themselves. As well as RBI governor has also talked about how rupee could be used as a currency to settle any of the cross-border trade settlement between these nations and CBDC that the RBI has also been talking about can also be used and this can also be areas where greater cooperation could be taken from all the countries in the South Asian region. So the most important thing that the RBI governor talked about is to have intra-regional trade, promote growth and employment by helping each other as well as by taking examples or learning from each other. So this was all that the RBI governor talked about. I hope you enjoyed whatever was there in the speech. Also, this is all that you need to see. You need not go back to the speech and read again. And you can take actually some good, very good points from here and then you can reproduce in your exam or in your interview. So this was all for today. We do not have any question for today. I hope you enjoyed the session. In case of any doubt or in case if you have certain feedback or certain uh, thing that you want to contribute, then you can do so in the comment section. And if you are a registered student, then yes, you can make use of our discussion forum. So thank you so much, everyone. Keep learning and all the best. Bye-bye.